for the first time. You know, we've kind of backed up fourth day in pads, back-to-back -back practices, and uh, I think you felt the, the felt the back and forth. You know, I, I thought the defense came out with a lot of good energy and tempo today. Um, they kind of got us in that first red zone period offensively, um, and I was kind of curious to see how our guys would respond after being tired and, and you know, being on the losing end of a period. And I thought they came back and answered the, the next red zone period with, with a really nice performance. Um, and then we had a chance to get some third down pressure work in, which is always a always my least favorite period playing against Denard with all the pressures they have. And then uh, we got a chance to work some backed up that uh, a lot of teachable moments in the backed up spot. First time we got down there on our minus one trying to come out. Really nice job uh, defensively on the first and last series. So uh, that was sort of the emphasis of practice. A little more red zone work, a little bit of third down pressure and uh, working on the backed up. As, as far as injuries go, um, really the guys that I said yesterday are all the same. Um, and ultimately we had one or two guys leave practice. Don't know what those look like until, until after practice. So um, any questions on those guys, I don't really have an answer for you until sometime other than right in this moment. Um, uh, Brownlee's been limping around. He's got a blister, and it just depends on how severe those are. Sometimes they rest him a day or two, but other than that, uh, not, nothing that I anticipate being an issue, but just some normal dings. How much of you enjoy like, just watching the Nard motivate his players, whether it's out here or maybe in the classroom, and how have you kind of seen that uh, manifest yeah. on the practice field? He's got a natural way about him when it comes to motivation, you know. I think as, as everybody's heard him speak before, it's just it's just part of who he is, and, and he does a great job knowing what buttons to push and when. He knows when to to, to put the hammer down. He knows when to love guys up, and, and he knows uh, when maybe a little pep talk might be necessary. So he, he does a great job with, with the defense and and keeping those guys, trying to keep them at a high level and uh, keep the motivation up in these in these hard days of camp. So uh, it's it's good to have him be able to do that. It's it's a it's a, a help for our defense. He's doing a lot of talking for the offense. Wiley, uh, Kinsey yeah. don't necessarily have a lot of stripes. Sure. Are uh, uh, you cool with that, or do you feel like a guy may maybe ought to be a little more low key until he has a more? You know, I, I, I like I like guys to be themselves. You know, and if that's part of what they do and, and need to do to to keep their engine hot and running at a high level, then uh, I'm all for it. You know, at some point you you earn your way uh, into those spots you know and, and everyone started out as a young player at some point and um you got to back it up obviously you know if you're going to talk i always tell guys like you say what you want but uh, just know that you got to answer for it at some point so uh, those guys know i like the energy i like the back and forth i, I don't mind any of our players kind of going back and forth that it kind of helps the energy of the practice when you previewed the wide receiver room a few months ago the slot position was something you were really curious to see who would step up it feels mm -hmm. like a lot of those guys have been making some plays, Kinsey, Phillips, Jackson, how would you like to, uh, what they've shown in camp so far? Um, it's been a really good performance by the interior receivers. You know, I think uh, Tyler is who he is. You guys have all seen his consistency and reliability. Uh, and then you got all those guys fighting for another spot, and, and really they've all made big plays between Mason Kinsey and I think Kyle Phillips has had a really nice camp so far, and uh, Daquan is having a good camp as well. He's learning a lot, but he's made some plays when he's had opportunities. So uh, from a depth perspective and a competition perspective, it's fantastic. I think those guys have put a really good camp together. Is this a normal week for you, or with the game on Saturday, do you guys change things up? Uh, it's a normal week. We only have so many padded practices, and uh, we'll keep our same rhythm. So this – you know, back-to-back -back padded practices going into an off day. We'll have our jog through the day after that. We'll practice twice more in pads, and then we'll have sort of a day before the game walk through, and then we'll go play. Um, and the reason we do that is because generally, even even our starters, um, they're going to play a little bit, but it's it's not going to be overly taxing on them. And you try to emphasize the ones reps in the padded practices, and maybe you pull the twos and threes back because they're going to play more uh, in practice. But we won't change our rhythm for the first game. Communication. Coaches, the players, and feel where you want to be heading into this first preseason game. Uh, yeah, we're gonna find out. Uh, you know, you never really know until you get into it. But so far, so good. Um, we got a little bit of practice run at it when we went to the stadium. It's just the communication from the box and down. So um, there's a lot of things I'm excited for about the preseason, and that's one of them for me. Um, just working the mechanics of the communication, how we're going to challenge plays, and when we're taking timeouts, and how we're managing the clock, and all that. So I'm looking forward to that process. That's going to be sort of my training camp too. Uh, so that'll be fun for me to, to iron all those things out. You see a lot of the guys, like even early on, they, they, it's just a more relaxed like feeling and vibe from them. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you came in wanting to establish, or is that just kind of like a, a byproduct of how your your order operates? Uh, I wanted to establish that. I want I want guys to feel like when they come into work, it's a place they enjoy coming to. Um, it's with people they enjoy working with, and uh, you know, I've always told these guys that there's a 
guys that play loose and aggressive um, tend to play better. They want guys to play free and, and play fast. And so that's probably a byproduct of those things. And the one thing I'll say about our team and kind of top to bottom really from every group is uh, these guys work and they work hard and it, they practice hard. This is a really hard practicing team. Um, a very Not at any point have I ever felt like we needed to kind of kick it up. I mean, they come out and they put the helmet on and they, and they go. And it's it's really impressive. It's a testament to all those guys and how hard they work. So uh, that part's been really positive. So I think they have a relaxed um, perspective in terms of we can go play fast and play free, um, but there's there's no shortage of, of intensity when they come to work. And I think that that's a really good balance to have. Team players seem almost relieved to be just back out here practicing, helmet mm-hmm. pads, all that. How's it look now that you've had an opportunity to sit? He's practiced like that, you know. I think he's practiced like he's he's a guy that missed playing football, and, and he's excited to be back out. And I think he's had a nice two days back in pads. You know, this is really his first two days of practice, um, and it's been a good showing for him so far. So we'll see as we stack some days, and you get a little bit more sore and a little bit more tired as the as the pads weigh you down some. But um, I've been pleased with where he started at. What did you see from from Traylon today in particular, and how do you think he's taken the, the D Hop news and opportunity? Yeah, he's done a nice job. I think what's important for Trey, and and I expressed this to him the other day, is that nothing changes for him. Whatever approach he's taken so far has has been fantastic. He's done everything we've asked. Uh, He's in great shape. He looks big and strong. He's made plays in practice. And uh, for him, I just said, there's no more pressure on you to do anything other than just do what you've been doing. And I think that he's in a good place uh, with that perspective. And I thought he's had a really good start to camp. I'm excited to see him play some uh, in the preseason and see what he does in in game action. But I'm very pleased with what he's done so far. How much thinner is he, and what does that do helping his game? You know, I don't know if it's if it's that he's thinner. I think that he's I think his body composition is better, um, but he still looks big and strong. I mean, he's a he's a big, thick dude, and um, he just looks strong, and he looks and he's in good shape. He can run and practice. And he practices hard, um, and hasn't missed any reps or anything like that. So, uh, I think he's just transformed his body more than he has you know slimmed down or anything like that. I think he's just stronger. How much do you feel to Bondre's presence when you're coaching the offense against him? A lot. <laughs> I feel it a lot. Um, he's just so big and so powerful, and, and he's got real pass rush wiggle for a guy his size. I mean, he can get on the edge and work it. He's got fast hands. Um, and, and I feel it standing back there. I feel the push. You know, those are two, him and Jeff inside. Um, you feel that, and you watch him in one-on-ones, and he can win one-on-one, which a lot of times those big guys struggle to win one-on-one, um, but he's got enough quickness to do it. So I, I feel him in the middle of the defense, and I think that's a that's a really good thing for us as a team. It's not great for me in practice. And a day like today that goes back and forth, like you said, what is the dynamic between you and Denard? Do you guys get, like, competitive with one another? Like, I got you, you got me, back and forth? Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we do, but we it's all we all know what the end goal is, you know. We all know we're playing on the same team, so uh, certainly there's moments where we both get competitive, and, and you want to get the better of the other, and um, that's healthy and encouraged. But you know, at the end of the day, you always always come over, and you'll see us talking and laughing, and because uh, we know what we're trying to get done, and, and we're not we're competing with each other, but. You know, we're trying to build the best team, and, and we're both on the same page there. So it's really fun. He's hard guy to compete against. Um, it's a hard system to go against, and um, it, it keeps us. It's going to make us better offensively in the long run for having to do all the things we have to do out here. We've seen what the we've seen what the first team defensive line has been able to do in terms of getting pressure in the second and third units. Are you seeing the pressure and the and the growth from those guys that you've been wanting to see in camp? Yeah, I have. You know, and I think I think you're seeing growth on both sides. You know, I think both the, those those. Those twos and threes in the offensive line, I think, have, have really improved. Um, and I think that that group on defense has done a really nice job. There's there's guys that uh, are practicing in those spots that we're probably going to count on to help us at some point, too. So it's been good to see. They've been competitive. I felt the rush on some of those guys. I felt their offensive line getting better inside, too, and uh, on, our, on our tackle edges. So it's been competitive. It's been good to see. It's it's good back and forth for those guys. And like I said, anytime you, you have good back and forth, it generally means that you know one side is not a whole lot worse than the other, and, and we're competitive. Is there a time before the season comes that you ever feel compelled to go ones versus twos? Um, I've done that before. Yeah, there's there's a time and a place for that. And it may, as we transition out of this you know, first part of training camp after the first preseason game, there may be a little more of that, um, particularly as we're getting ready for games. So. I can't say I have a hard and fast philosophy on it. I've done it before in different places. Um, it tells you sometimes how how good your twos are uh, when they have to play against ones. There's a, there's some revealing 
nature to it. Um, and you can see if they can bow up against what is allegedly better competition for them. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's definitely positives to doing it. You know, Mason Rudolph has been having a solid camp, and so has Malik. Mm-hmm. We talked about the backup quarterback battle. Have you considered giving Malik a day with the twos just to see if the work against the threes translates up moving up? Yeah, that's, that's those are things we've talked about. Uh, the hard part is that, that Mason's played so well, too. You know, it's not that we wouldn't be moving Malik up because of Mason's performance. We'd just be allowing Malik an opportunity to, to play with the twos. And, you know, I think they'll get opportunities in the games as well to, to play with the other groups. And so, um, you know, it's hard to hard to elevate Malik and demote, demote Mason when Mason's played very, very good football too. So um, it's a good problem to have. Like I said, it's, it's, it helps the rest of the group be able to showcase and they can both operate and manage and it, it helps the whole process for guys competing. So that part's been really positive. Um, to say that Malik will play with the twos at some point, I think that's you know just a chance for him to showcase his skills as well. I'm sure that's something that'll be, uh, he'll get a chance at. He plays on time. You know, and then he, he's he's got a little bit of gamer to him. And when I think when we play in these unscripted periods and he starts to play football, you can see uh, his experience playing football. He's He's got a plan. Um, and that's a lot of things we talk about with the quarterback is, you know, before, when you're going up to snap a play, you, you have to have a plan. Whatever the criteria for the play is, whatever the protection issues are, whatever the route is, knowing the coverage, he just always has a plan at the line of scrimmage. And, and you see that that comes from playing. You get hit in the mouth a few times, you, you tend to have a plan. So um, that part's been really good. It's just his operation and knowing where to go with the ball. Uh, and then when he's throwing it, he's throwing it accurate. I mean, he's made some really nice throws over the course of camp, and um, he's everything that I remember him being, having to play against them. So that's been really positive. Oh, very high. Uh, I think that's part of what – uh, why we wanted to keep him around, you know, he was had a, we had, had a chance to bring him back on his, I think it was his RFA tender, um, and we decided we wanted to because of what he's done. I, I got a lot of respect for his journey, you know, he's he's had to earn it the hard way all the way through, um, and he's continues really every year he's played to show up and, and be reliable, and um, that's a really big part of playing receivers is being where you're supposed to be and being able to make plays and. He's a fantastic person. He's on top of all the details. He never has mental errors, um, and, he's, and he's reliable when the ball comes his way. He makes plays on it, and the more plays you make like that, the more opportunities you get. And, and he's been a—it's um, been really nice having him in that group. He provides some leadership uh, and some veteran presence too. It's—it's it's been good to have him as a compliment. How's Cheeto coming along? How's Cheeto coming along? Is it a rehab, and do you have a timeline yet? Uh, no real timeline yet. Um, you know, it's just, it, calves are always you know a little bit tricky, so you just you kind of wait and rehab, and you just you don't want to rush those because, um, as I've experienced before, uh, you, you can re-injure calf injuries and you set the whole thing back. Um, so you just take your time and be patient. There's no rush to get him back. We're trying to get ready for September. Coach, real quick, uh, Jeffrey Simmons with the long first day in pads on Tuesday. It feels yeah. like a while ago. How do you sure think does. he responded the rest of the week? How do you like what we saw from him? Great. I, I, think, um, I think what was cool to see is he, he came back from, you know, he was running pretty hot that first day in pads, and it, it was good to see him settle back in and just focus on, on instead of, trying to fight everybody making some plays and, and what he what I saw was a guy that played under control but still plays really violent uh, he made a ton of plays in the next two practices really I mean the screens he sniffed out just about every one of them um, he is he is who everybody thinks he is as, as far as a player and uh, it was really good to see him I mean he's he's still wrecks practice half the time so uh, I don't love that but it's good for our football team yeah Thanks, all right guys like, uh, I guess, kind of getting to know some of the, your teammates around you. What have you seen from some of the young guys out there that have been competing alongside them? Yeah, I see a lot of them young guys. They're hungry. They're ready to compete. And they're always asking questions. That's what I love about them. What do they ask you? What do, what do you tell them? They tell me technique-wise what, what they need to do. You know, I try to give them my best advice on the playbook because I'm learning as well. I try to give them best advice what I know. Who was that guy for you when you came into the league? Tyron Matthews. Oh man, he's he 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 taught me everything really, and that's who I try to mimic off of to teach the young guys. How much of a young Legarius Sneed do you see in Jarvis Brownlee? Uh, a lot, you know. Jarvis, he's a very very great player. You know, he's take coaching, and I, I love his game. I love how he come out every day, ready to work, and I see it on the field. He's he's progressing in the right direction. Talked about your kind of aggressive mindset being contagious for, for the DBs. It certainly seems like that's the case. How, how do you feel about the way the secondary as a whole 
is playing. Oh uh, yeah, you know it's, it's it's early right now, but you know I, I honestly think we headed in the right direction. I see where we headed, and you know I think it's going to be a great great season. What stood out getting to know Kenneth Murray so far, and just kind of what do you like about the way he plays in the middle? Oh man, Kenneth, he, he flies around, you know, he's he's like a bulldog in the middle of the field, you know, he's going for sideline to sideline, and he's our leader. Uh, Denar Wilson had mentioned that, you know, even though you're not out there on the field, you're getting that mental sweat. Can you kind of take this into, like, what type of benefits and how that helps you? Oh man, it helps me a lot, you know, I'm in the... In the me rooms, you know, when he coaches someone else up, I write that down as well, you know, for when I come out here and get the plan that I won't mess it up. And also in walkthroughs, you know, I do walkthroughs every day with them and I make sure that I'm in there doing my work through the right progression and everything. People talk about your walkthroughs being aggressive like games. Where does that come from? Like why, why did you develop that? Oh, uh, man, you know, it's just something that I does, you know, because that's the most critical times right there, you know, because you going slow. But you also can work your technique, you know, and not get worse out there. You're supposed to get better. What do you think about the guys, uh, the receivers, the opposite, the DBs, what you've seen from them? How good do you think that group can be? Oh, man, lovely. You know, 16, you know, I tell him every day, man, you got way better from what I've seen recently, past years. And I told him to keep working and keep working. And Calvin Ridley, you know, all the other guys, they working us. And I tell them, make sure y'all work us when we come out here. Chirping back and forth, some of the some of the offensive guys I love it. the talk and don't have a lot of stripes yet. Does that matter to you? Uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, as long as you back it up on the field. You know, you can talk all you want. I'm not a talking guy myself. I just play football. But, you know, if you can back it up, I don't mind. The uh, NFL Top 100 had Tyreek Hill number one on the list. We've uh, seen you against Tyreek, so you're in for it. Uh, you know, I, I I don't pay no mind to that. You know, I, I did what I did. That's in the past. You know, it's on to next year. He got to see me again this year. What do you think about Mahomes not being number one? Uh, you know, Mahomes is a great player. Everybody knows that. But you know, you know, I don't pay no parts of that. <laughs> been here just uh, what five months? Maybe what's it been like, kind of getting settled in on the, in the city? Uh, yeah, I love I love the city. You know, I'm I'm way out the city. I stay like 45 minutes out the city. But you know. You know, I'm just learning everybody, learning the organization and trying to get to know everybody for who they are and who they really is. What, uh, what are you seeing from Burks? And have you noticed him stepping up the last couple days with, with the news about Hopkins? Uh, yes, I can see him stepping up. You know, he's he, he been doing it. You know, it's not just since Hop been gone, but I, I can see the progression that he's making. As in getting off the ball, I tell him his route running. I tell him, I also tell him his feet. So he also give tails, and I tell him what to do. Do you respond immediately to those tails? Definitely, yeah. Are they different than anybody else's, or is it just stuff you pick up? It's just stuff I pick up on that I, that I study. You think you need to play much in the preseason, or just uh, do what you need to do out here to be ready for the season? Look, man, you know, whatever it takes for me to get back on the field, you know, if I'm feeling good, I get out there, you know, whatever it takes, I'm trying to get to that first game. Appreciate you, Legit. Yeah. Appreciate it. But it looks like at times you don't know how to respond to it. Yeah. Is that fair? I mean, you know, you don't really want to create bad energy throughout practice. Um, you know, two, two alpha dogs, you know, just competing. Um, he's the best, you know, defensive tackle in the game, so. Every day I'm going to show up and, you know, just try to sharpen my game going against them every single day. It might get chippy at the end of the day, but, you know, it is what it is. Where do you think you've been able to sharpen your game? Say Where do you think you've been able to sharpen your game? Uh, really just paying attention to details, you know. Um, I gave up uh, something down here in the um, back, um, backed up um, period. Uh, you know, he, he rushed the inside of me and, you know, usually you don't really see something like that. So just being attention to detail with how you're, you know, coming off with your feet, your hands, and make sure they're in the right places. Otherwise, you'll get edge and, you know, have a bad play. So. How much are you looking forward to Saturday night and putting on the uniform and playing as a pro for the first time? Yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true. Um, but, you know, you try to take it day by day. You know, we got meetings tonight, um, walk through tonight, all that stuff. So um, really just trying to be where your feet are and staying locked in to what's going on right now. Well, JC, that week big things that you, you pulled out of that? Um, yeah, just being with um, Trent, you know, he's the best offensive tackle in the game, best lineman in the game. Um, things that I really took away is how open he was about his mistakes, you know. Uh, I'm not going to say, you know, if you're the best, you should be arrogant, but um, just his kind of awareness on what he needed to do better. You know, we watched film um, against, you know, Miles Garrett, and it was a couple of us down there, um, and he was just letting them know, like, 
yeah, like, you know, people know I'm, I'm pretty good, but, you know, most people aren't going to tell me what I need to do better. You know, it might even not even come down to the coaches um, also because, you know, they got so much to, that they got to do, so you got to kind of coach yourself. You know, so watching him going against Miles, he's correcting himself on every little thing that he did. You know, and that's the, the peak of the game. And if you're at the peak of the game, you're always trying to find ways to be better. So that was just a surreal moment, you know, um, just in the in the film room. And then just working out, training, you know, seeing how, how hard he was getting after it. You know, one of the um, exercises was like, um, it was a superset with um, pull-ups. It was like four four sets of ten, and in my head I'm like, ain't no way. Like, you know, I'm 350. He's probably like 340, 335, whatever it is. Ain't no way he's doing ten pull-ups, four sets. And I'm talking, like, he just got up there and just got after it, you know. And I'm just like, that's that's a freaking uh, nature right there. So, you know, just seeing his training, his level of intensity that he brings, you know, one um, go the distance on anything, no matter what it is. So. What's some of the feedback he gave you? Uh, I mean, I did straight. I mean, it was tough, but, you know, I didn't do it as good as he did. But <laughs> What's some of the feedback he gave you, you know, after watching you? Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't have no, like, one-on-one -on -one drills with defensive players. We were just going over technique also outside of the um, workouts and film. Um, and really just shooting my hands, you know. Coming out of college, you're not really going to – you'll see maybe a handful of guys who are really good pass rushers, you know, like Dallas Turner um, was, but you really won't see, you know – um, the guys that you're finna face now in college on a week-to-week -week basis, even in practice. So, you know, um, the most vital things that a lot of college kids um, kind of aren't even aware of is just when and how to shoot their hands, how to be um, active with your hands, counters, and always just fighting every single rep, kind of like a, a boxer. So, since your since your the pads have gone on, how much do you feel? What do you feel like you've improved the most, and where do you feel like you still want to work? Um. Well, I feel like the one thing I really want to work on is just seeing the whole field. Um, it's a lot, a lot more intangibles than college. You know, you got to focus in on the cadence. You know, so many different cadences. You got to pay attention to the defense. Um, every play has a set rule of, you know, um, of things that are whatever, depending on what the defense is, is in. So you got to understand every single play down to the very, you know, minute detail. Um, and then your get off and technique that goes along with it. So just being able to see everything all at once and put it all together just to go out there and play, something I always continue to look to, to improve on. Where have you worked on your body since you've been drafted? What's been your My main thing was really just getting a lot lighter on my feet. Um, you know, I'm a big dude, I'm, you know, I'm 350. Um, so a lot of people say, you know, when you're this big, you can't really move, you know? and. Uh, I kind of want to just kind of change that narrative about myself. You know, I, at no point I feel like I'm good enough to where I can just stop trying to master my craft. So uh, every day I try to make sure I'm doing hitting some type of ladders and you know uh, explosive movements to make sure my feet's always matching up with my strength. So days see out here first one out here. Sometimes out here by yourself working. Yeah. When, when did you start kind of developing that work ethic and why is that important to kind of get that extra work? Yeah, um, I kind of developed that when I was in high school. I got flipped to offensive line my junior year. Um, and that was kind of a, a awkward moment, I would say, because I didn't know if I would play football in college just because I was a junior. You know, I had a lot of offers as a defensive lineman, but, you know, I didn't know if they would still stand with me changing positions and stuff. So, um, you know, I just, I mean, I was all the way in Florida at IMG. You know, I was on the other side of the country from home. So, you know, I mean, anything I had to do, I had to work. So that's when I was like, all right, let me put the work in. And, you know, lucky enough for me, I saw the results and I saw, you know, how everything was starting to um, change around me and how just keep working, like just help better my environment and myself. So that's what I always stuck to. So whenever things get kind of tough for me or just being consistent with the work is something I always look forward to do. I know he doesn't line up goals from you, but for your unit, how big of a problem has Devon Ray Sweat been? <laughs> um, I mean, he's a, he's a big he's a big boy. Um, <laughs> you just gotta get your hands on him, and you know, just look to continue to fight. You know, I think he's a great athlete. Um, someone that big, who, uh, he's really good with his hands, um, really quick and nimble. You know, he's not one of those sloppy bigs who just wants to bull rush every single play. You know, he'll try to get open and get in space and make a move. You know, so um, um, I mean, yeah, he I mean, he's what like 370. So like, you know, when you're that big, you're a problem for anybody's unit, really, honestly. How good do you think he can be? How much do you think he, he wants to be good? Uh, for T Sweat? Yeah, I mean, I think he wants to be better than uh, Jeff, and Jeff's the best in the game right now. Pound for pound, which is more athletic. Yeah, Between who? You and Sweat. Me. Without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Did you lobby with Callahan to get any of those, you know, tackle eligible? Or nah, he, we ain't doing it. No. He shot you down? Yeah, I guess so.
Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks.